Yo, do you want to know how transcendentalism ties into One Piece? What kind of power source does Vegapunk want? Have you ever wondered how an object can attain devil fruit powers? Or what exactly is a Club Otterman? Well, I'll tell you. But before we begin, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It'll mean the world to me and motivate me to make more content for you amazing people. Ralph Waldo Emerson believed in a God as a creator, a God that is alive and who dwells amongst his creation, nature. This is the reason why the natural world was so revered by Emerson. Nature was the divine space, not a man-made church. Vegapunk is a man who created technology using nature, soul, and science. I believe Oda's design of Vegapunk was not just inspired by Albert Einstein, but also Emerson. Vegapunk believes all people can utilize the energy around them. He believes that's the infinite power source needed to ignite his dream of sharing punk records with the world. Vegapunk wants a world where energy is available to all. This is where I see his ideologies mixed with transcendentalists and philosophers. Transcendentalism is where people, men, and women equally have knowledge about themselves and the world around them that transcends or goes beyond what they can see, hear, taste, touch, or feel. I believe these transcendentalist beliefs are tied to One Piece. They are similar and I believe Oda was inspired by transcendentalism. In Emerson's essay, The Oversoul, he explores the idea of a spiritual unity that transcends individual existence. Emerson suggests that there is a divine presence within each person, which he calls the Oversoul, that connects all living beings to one another and to the universe as a whole. He argues that the experience of this transcendent unity can inspire feelings of sublime, such as awe, wonder, and spiritual insight. In chapter 1069, Vegapunk even says how sublime. He was in awe of the sun, a trance light state. He saw the true sun, as in sun god Nika. Both Vegapunk and Emerson believe in the true power in nature, but I think Vegapunk wants to use all of nature's energy until there might be nothing left. He might let his selfishness take control. Vegapunk is known for being a perfectionist. In chapter 1067, Vegapunk declared Momo's artificial fruit as a failure only because it was the color pink. Jinbei even refers to him as a perfectionist. Maybe the world is fine just the way it is. Vegapunk just doesn't like it. He doesn't want to make things perfect. He just hated the way things were. He's selfish. Does the world need to be more advanced? What Vegapunk wants might completely destroy nature. It may need a lot of energy. What if in the past, the ancient kingdom got too greedy? They took advantage of nature. To where technology was too advanced that it destroyed society. Vegapunk might make this happen again. Maybe unintentionally. Emerson states in his Oversoul essay that within man is the soul of the whole, the wise silence, the universal beauty, to which every part and particle is equally related, the eternal one. We see the world piece by piece as the sun, the moon, the animal, the tree, but the whole of which these are the shining parts is the soul. What I think he's trying to say is that we are all part of nature. Everything in the world becomes one. The soul of a human is infinite and beautiful. God is everywhere and we are part of this unity. We are our own individual. We are all beautiful. Nature is beauty, which ties into the world of One Piece. Everything in the world has a soul, whether it be a person or a product of nature like the trees, mountains, etc. We become one piece. Or is it One Piece? In chapter 1068, Vegapunk states that energy is everywhere. People can be so short-sighted if they'd only open their eyes, there's energy all around us. I think Vegapunk wants to be able to convert nature into a power source. I think nature may be what hockey originates from. Hockey is fueled by a person's will slash spirit, and a will can be inherited by someone else, which makes a person's will eternal. A devil fruit can be the personification of a person's dream or will. So what if the eternal flame that Vegapunk is looking for are the dreams of all living things? Vegapunk could personify people's dreams into energy, infinite energy, the dreams inside devil fruits, the dreams inside nature. The children of mother nature all share dreams, even the inanimate objects such as the ocean, a mountain, etc. A sun can die out, it's not eternal, but a man's dream will never die. A dream will be the fire to the eternal flame. It will give Vegapunk or the government perpetual energy. Creating something with perpetual motion has been a dream for scientists in the real world for years. Perpetual motion is the motion of bodies that continues forever. A perpetual motion machine is a hypothetical machine that can do work infinitely without an external energy source. This kind of machine is impossible as it would violate either the first or second law of thermodynamics, or both. What if people are stuck in a perpetual state? They're staring at a fake flame. The flame casts a shadow on the people creating fake dreams. If Luffy were to liberate these people as the sun god, his white flame will create new, real dreams. This is where the allegory of Plato's cave comes into play. The allegory of the cave is featured in Plato's book, The Republic. The allegory of the cave imagines a group of people chained together inside an underground cave as prisoners. Behind the prisoners there is a fire, and between the prisoners and the fire are moving puppets and real objects on a raised walkway with a low wall. However, the prisoners are unable to see anything behind them, as they have been chained and stuck looking in one direction, at the cave wall their whole lives. 
As they look at the wall before them, they believe the shadows of objects cast by moving figures are real things, and the only things. Their visible world is their whole world. What would happen if one of the prisoners were forced to leave? The freed prisoner would return and try to liberate their fellow prisoners. In chapter 1018, Who's Who brings up the legend of Nika. Nika was a heroic, benevolent figure who was a friend to slaves. It was said that Nika would one day come for the slaves to liberate them from their oppressive masters and bring smiles to their faces. Nika will liberate people from Plato's cave. In the world of One Piece, we see different kingdoms and islands that are being ruled by some tyrant or the government. The citizens of these islands and kingdoms stare at a fake flame and cast fake shadows. The shadows represent a person's dream slash desire. People are casting fake dreams and desires thanks to the government and evil rulers like Doflamingo and Crocodile. Luffy has already liberated some people. People can now break out of their artificial dreams. They'll wake up to a new dream. They'll wake up to a new dawn. Luffy's white flame will shine onto the people. It'll make them appreciate the sun, their sun god, and nature. The sun god Nika will awaken new real dreams for people that will be reflected off their shadows. People under a tyrannical rule do not see the sun. They lack imagination. They're used to seeing the same thing every day. They follow the same laws. They lack a childlike innocence, a child's perpetual youth. Let's say a person sees the sun for the first time. That sublime sense of awe can come back. It will awaken their true dreams and desires. You'll pretty much have a wake up call to appreciate reality. After seeing God's true son, Nika, they won't take it for granted. They'll be in awe. They'll be free, liberated. Next time a person sees the sun, the sky, a mountain, or the sea, they'll see it as if they fell in love for the first time again. Plato uses the image of the sun to help define the true meaning of the good. The good sheds light on knowledge so that our minds can see true reality. Another example is the umibuzu. What are they? We're just seeing their shadows. They can be anything. We need a flame to see their true forms. Luffy's Nika fruit will reveal them. Luffy's flame is the color white. It seems important. It's like you're given a white piece of paper. You can create whatever you want as long as you can imagine it. These transcendentalists were all writers and poets. So a blank sheet of paper was like their shield and the pen was their sword. What if that's how a Vivre card works? People just don't know how to utilize them to the fullest because they are not using their imagination. Fisher Tiger is carrying a flame tattoo on his chest. I see that as a metaphor for the flame in Plato's cave. Fisher Tiger became a slave for the world nobles at some point in his adventures. After managing to escape his captors and return to Fishman Island, Tiger climbed back through the red line to Marijoie in order to free his fellow slaves. Unlike most pirates, the Sun Pirates, Jolly Roger is simply a red sun. The sun represents the tattoo that all members have. For many of the founding members, it was created to hide the hoof of the soaring dragon mark they had when they were slaves. The Sun Pirates symbol can symbolize Sun God Nika. Another example is the Revolutionaries. Their logo is the Revolutionary Army. The letters R and A that may refer to the Egyptian god Ra. They are supporters of the sun god and wait for its awakening. In Emerson's nature essay, he points out how, here in the woods, I feel standing on the bare ground, my head bathed by the blithe air and uplifted into infinite space. I become a transparent eyeball. I am nothing. I see all. The currents of the universal being circulate through me. I am part or parcel of God. Nobody owns the landscape itself. We can take advantage of nature itself. Nature belongs to everyone. All of us are capable of taking advantage of this beautiful thing. If you make yourself part of nature and go out in the world and look at everything around, you can be one with nature. You become a transparent eyeball. The universe is giving you its data. Vegapunk wants to share punk records with the world, share its data of the world's history. Imagine people being able to access Vegapunk's punk records while they sleep in their dreams. They need the imagination to dream. I think it's possible if everyone shared the same dream. If everyone in the world were to be a part of nature, go back to their roots, to their youth, where nature awakens their youth, a youth with a never-ending smile and unlimited imagination. Emerson believed that in the present age, few adult persons can see nature. Most persons do not see the sun. At least, they have a very superficial seeing. For seeing and understanding, nature entails not only asking what nature is or how it operates, but also to what end is nature. You unlock your perpetual youth that you had when you were young. Emerson believes going out in nature later in life will awaken your younger self. That's important because that's when you have the imagination of a kid. All nature in the world would leave you in awe. Being out in the city, out in society where there's technology will make you forget of your youth. This is why Emerson secluded himself from society. It gave him unlimited imagination. I find the transparent eyeball fascinating. Is this what it means to hear the voice of all things in the One Piece world? You have to seclude yourself from society and become one with nature? That is when one becomes a transparent eyeball. You become one with nature. You can hear the voice of all living things, hear their souls. Emerson argues that nature is never used up. When the right mind examines it, it is a source of boundless curiosity. No man can own the landscape. It belongs. 
if it belongs to anyone at all, to the poet, the artist. When a man returns to nature, he can rediscover his lost youth, that wide-eyed innocence he had when he went among nature as a boy. What if that's why the world government and Do Flamingo want laws open open no me to themselves? It is also called the ultimate devil fruit because of its unique power to grant another person eternal youth in exchange for the user's own life. I think the government wants the unlimited imagination of a kid. If you stay youthful for eternity, you will always be one with nature. You will never lose touch with it. Your imagination will always be at its prime. Your hockey will always be at its prime. The Gorosei are old. They might even be immortal, but they lack perpetual youth. Maybe it was used on an object. Like Joy Boy's straw hat, Joy Boy's will slash dream will now live eternally. What if the perpetual youth surgery was used on a devil fruit? Like the Hito Hito no Mi model Nika. So its dream would never die. The dream of the sun god. What if the government is trying to achieve the voice of all things? The voice of all things refers to messages conveyed by inanimate objects and animals that do not speak the human language. Only a very small number of people in the world possess the ability to hear this voice. In the world of One Piece, being out at sea is considered being free versus being trapped on an island stuck in society under the rules of the government or some ruler. You can also be out in the woods like Luffy was when he was a kid secluded from society. If one possesses the voice of all things they may be able to utilize the energy nature has around them. Everything that mother nature created or the soul created has a voice that can be heard. Another interesting thing is Eam. What if Eam has achieved the transparent eyeball? There's a panel in chapter 908 where we see just Eam's huge eyes like they can see all. What if Eam stands for I am? I am a god. In Emerson's Nature essay, he says that nature includes everything that is not me, separate from the soul. Nature, both nature, those essences unchanged by humans like a tree or a river, and art, those essences mixed with the will of humans like a house or a canal, all other men and my own body. In his Nature essay, he points out how nature and the soul are two sides of the same coin. Nature is considered anything in the world that's unchanged by human like a tree or river, while the soul is you, the person. When you mix the essence of nature with the will slash soul of humans, you get art such as a house or ship. For example, in the One Piece world, there's Klabot men, which are spirits that dwell in ships, a ship that has developed a life of its own after being cared and loved for. A person makes a ship, then they combine their soul with nature to make the ship. They put a part of their soul into the ship, which then gives it life. If one puts their heart and soul into their art, that may be what creates a club otterman. Also, what about an object that has a devil fruit? So you want to forge a gun? Why not just mix the devil fruit with the gun you're crafting? I don't think it's that simple. You are using nature to make a person-made object. You are combining your soul with nature to create art. This art is a new creation by man, so a gun normally would be a creation made by nature and the soul. But when an object has a devil fruit, I believe the person isn't putting their soul into the gun. They're putting the soul of the devil fruit into the gun. And how else would you get the soul of a devil fruit? I I think it's by extracting the blood of a devil fruit. You then splash the blood on the object. Then boom, the object has devil fruit powers. An artificial devil fruit is made by a person combining their soul with nature, along with science, to create an act against God. Artificial devil fruits were born from desire but created through science. Vegapunk can alter the DNA of a soul, a person, and make his own creation. Vegapunk was able to replicate the Lunarian DNA into the Seraphim. Science can act outside the boundaries of the soul and nature. Vegapunk is acting against God. Vegapunk is playing God. Vegapunk is extracting the blood from a devil fruit or the devil fruit user. He's altering the DNA of an object or soul and making something new. The green blood that is extracted from devil fruits or devil fruit users might be very important. The color green represents nature. What if the government or Vegapunk wants to get Luffy's blood? They want to replicate the Hito Hito no Mi model Nika. They'll be able to make even stronger Seraphim with infinite energy. Vegapunk is playing the role of God and going against nature. He's blending science, soul, and nature to make one new being. A person eating a devil fruit is eating the soul of the devil, the desires. They become one. It's an act against God. It's practically cannibalism. In the past, people believed Catholics were cannibals since they drank the blood of Christ, but it was just wine. It is an act deserved of punishment. Devil fruits are nature. They are part of the life cycle. A person's will and desire is transferred to a devil fruit. Their soul travels to the nearest object that is part of nature, such as a tree or fruit, an object that is pure of nature, not human made, one that was made by mother nature. I mentioned Club Otterman earlier. What if they represent or are parallel to the forest god Pan? The going Mary had a sheep for its bow. Pan is the god of the forest and fields and patron of shepherds. There's a poem by poet Oscar Wilde. Oh goat foot god of Arcady, this modern world is gray and old. And what remains to us of thee, thou many an unsung elegy, sleeps in the reeds of our river's hold. Oh goat foot god of Arcady, ah what remains to us of thee, ah leave the hills of Arcady, thy satyrs and their wanton play. 
this modern world hath needed thee then blow some trumpet loud and free and give thine odin pipe away ah leave the hills of arcady this modern world hath need of thee in this poem wild is calling to the great god pan to return to the modern age because wild's world has lost the influence and presence of pan wild's poem gives the idea that pan is only sleeping that he has the ability to awake and return to reinstate the power in nature in the modern world and revitalize it with his essence I think this goes with Luffy awakening his devil fruit. When Luffy awakened sun god Nika, he also awakened the sun god Pan. Wano was a mess. Nature was dying. There was chemicals contaminating the water. They were distributing smile devil fruits. Kaido was giving people fake smiles and contaminating nature. Then there was Luffy who saved the land from Kaido. By the end of the arc, nature was restored. Luffy brought smiles to everyone. When humans advance too far into technology, they forget about what nature really is. They forget to live side by side with nature. Instead, they are distracted by the art they made. Eventually, there will be no nature left. In Oscar Wilde's poem, it mentions, Then blow some trumpet loud and free. I think this is parallel to Luffy's heart beating the drums of liberation and making him free. I think Oda uses Luffy as a base for the god of the sun and the god of the forest. Luffy is supposed to represent both Pan, the god of the forest, and Helios, the god of the sun. And Eam might be the god of nature, Demeter slash Terra. And Vegapunk is trying to play Mother Nature. He wants to play God. Another thing I want to bring up is Django. I recently saw a video by The Last Arc and they talk about Django's hypnosis. They also mentioned how Django was asleep when he got his devil fruit or he had some kind of awakening. I believe Django was asleep in nature. He became a transparent eyeball and was able to blend his soul with nature, which in return is what gave him the mushroom on his chin. The pendulum Django uses looks like an eye. That can represent the transparent eyeball. When you're asleep, you let your soul be free. Django's hypnosis can be putting people under an extreme sense of awe. They are put in a trance. They'll fall asleep like Pan. Another example is Miss Golden Week. She utilizes her unique skills as a painter to employ a special type of hypnosis based on colored paint. In this way, she can change a person's personality through the use of certain colors. This is referred to as color trap. Miss Golden Week is an artist. She creates art. She is probably one with nature. She is also a kid, so she is also in a trance-like state of awe. Her imagination is endless. She's at the peak of her perpetual youth. This explains why she's able to use her painting to hypnotize people. I think Django and Miss Golden Week got their powers without eating a devil fruit. Music can be another way to connect everyone's soul. It's an art made by just the soul, but everything in nature can sing along since everything has a soul slash spirit. What if this is a way to have everybody become one with nature? Singing can enhance the soul and leave everyone in a sense of awe. They'll be on the same wavelength. Brooke and his violin, he's able to hypnotize people with it. A soul was mixed with nature to make the violin. What if Brooke was able to put more of his soul into the violin to enhance it? It's easier to put more of your soul into things while you're under a sense of awe. Nature mixed with music can leave your emotions in an uncontrollable state. Brooke was dead. He literally became a transparent eyeball when he was in his soul form. What if everyone in the world of One Piece gets together to sing Bink Sake? Their souls will all become one. Vegapunk would be able to use it as energy. One last thing, I would like to also thank Cube of the Red Sea for helping me put the pieces into this puzzle. Since I talked about the forest god, I want to bring up another god. There's a song sung by Luffy I randomly stumbled upon. It's called Every One Peace. In the song, there's a lyric that says, A peace sign for the sun, always smile. This is foreshadowing Luffy being the sun god Nika. The peace sign has the shape of the letter V, which stands for victory. And if you go deeper, the goddess of victory is Nike, who is also known as Nika. One Piece? Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like and subscribe button. It'll mean the world to me. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Peace.